हम दिस ये नहीं है हम को अने डाउन अपो पे डाउन ज़ूम डालो कोरेय डाउन ज़ूम में सुबह पा चुकी बना अने बाकी जो ये सी ला आजी न्याना ले दी शू को चिवाला ना बमशुजी ये नहीं अच्छी आने दम ना मी दम ना दूँ बोले दिल दी बमशुरो ये नहीं दूँ बमशुरो ये नहीं दे दिल दी गोल्डन मासिर इस अ लार्ज रिवर एंड साइप्रेनिट इस सर्टेनली द लार्जेस्ट फिश इन बुटिनिस रिवर्स डिस्पाइड ऑल दैट यू नो एंड वेरी लिटल हैज बीन डन टू प्रोटेक्ट एंड कंजर्व द गोल्डन म Probably of all the masirs in Asia, and they're only found in Asia, are the golden masir is the one that is the most revered, the most beautiful because of its golden fins and its golden scales, and because it is one of the eight auspicious symbols of Buddhism. Tak nak ikhlas lagi, beli cincin zir sila bila. Tapi zaman hari ni beli cincin serinya sebab tu, macam touch dagi le serinya gigi pasi dulu lah. Tapi macam ikhlas khadar lu beli serinya gigi pasi um mila. Nyer zaman ni ada seorang macam cuma sejajar lo, inci minci. Kalau dia ni lah, kami kita paham yang orang lain. Cukup beli cincin cukju, cincu di kalau, jadi boleh beli cincin sumsi. Ani, tuan 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 so mac, boleh macam ani sangat lah. Cukup makan, boleh di sana sangat lah. The Nyazumidi, the Mapa, the Zani, the Gini, the Beudalu, the Zumzum Dail, and the Nomel are very cheap. The Nashi Kalna are very cheap. The Lambda Chambis are the Shadam, the Lambda Summer, the Dachila. And the Rotoku Tapabe, the Lani. पाशी चिबा पाशी रैम चिबा बे ता जीर दिखा चुकी बला हालो इब दलु तान चिंग को क्या अने बे लुलु डे होला ताने लुप ची तले जीर दिखा ता चुकी बुना ले जो तले थाप दी थेन में ओनो ला ता थाप थेन बचीन ता खोले दोग जों सी मेला तले खोले की उदू बे चुकी बे अशुगी बे तले नागी थाप Ini nak tahu kan? Kalau nak, kalau apa? Kalau apa? Orang hantar hantar rentet mana rentet dan? Madam apa? Dari kucing, dari nombor lagi dari kucing kuda di dari makan orang berapa? Yang ni, oleh kita tahu orang pom. Abu kucing kuda orang pom jadi pom merentet ni ni ni. Nara ni 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 hok dia dong hari ni. Nara ni ada sembuh ni mak.
Tak ni mesti cerita di dua cerita di bawah mana yang sesuai lah. Sungai macam tu jabcur na, tak jabcur na mesti macam ni. Tak yang ni ber masalah dah lesum zinjung be, lesum dajim tap tahan ber ni dah. Tak sungai gunung ni khatul be macam jam ni kacau kah nai, tule nyagi zin disu nai, tule pap disu nai, rosanam ni khatul be macam tak apa gudul lo, tule am cukli lo, tule dah sisi kopi lo. ए मालो अंजु गारा नाम बे तो आजी सीधा ये मत छिप दे दी था लेश ये रे यासी सुनील था ता जिल से मिल दिया कि ता ये मत दिया नम समय ची छुंकु बंदी नम समय ची हाँ मागोला ता जमलिंग ना ता केंटेची इंबे रो दा छुई नाले वेज नोब जोंच में लखो तो जिल दी काचे में चला ना मा जमलिंग ना केंटेची काचे पे आचे जे ना जिल दी नम तो में तो ना जे ना जे न्याल हम भाई ला चौंग न्याल से मांग न्याल कांगाई ये जे नम समय ला जिल रे रे ये चम्च में तो ला ये माँ द माँ दिन ल दिया ते वे द द माँ द देवी की द देवो भी खून दी द मिलो नूसी चिबे तर ना बा मिलो द द यागी जो दले द लेगल जिसे माजब ची गोसु दले प्रोजेक्ट दले लम जिसे गोसु बे दले असी द माता असी न्यम जासनो सुनीला ताने बेंडी ना ची द न्यम द न्यम मजुनी दिन ना ची की द को थोप जूंदरो ada ngaji ni mah banyak je nak kumpas si jam tu dia ni lah, ane dari napa ngat tanim tu dia je lah kumpas kaji tu je lah, dari napa dia ngaji singkam jam 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 tu ni lah. In 2014, Bhutan got concerned about what the impact of dams might be on the rivers, on the river ecosystems. So people on the board of uh, WWF invited the Fisheries Conservation Foundation to come over to look at the rivers, to talk to people, see what was going on, and then make a recommendation on what type of biological information is really needed for developing conservation strategies. Most of the research has been done in India and Nepal, and so nothing from Bhutan. And when you look at the landscape of Bhutan and the rivers here, um, we felt that, you know, it's much, uh, uh, it could be a much different um, selection pressures, much different um, behavior here than in other, uh, other parts of the Golden Mystery Range. This study uh, will tell us, you know, when the golden marshes migrate to Bhutan, when and where do they spawn, how do they react to changing water flows, and all these are important data to come up with strat better strategies for protecting and conserving the golden marshes, not just in Bhutan but uh, everywhere else that where this fish is distributed. It's the first research study of, of Messier in Bhutan, both chocolate and golden Messier. It is the first radio telemetry study ever, anywhere within its range. We believe there are probably in at least seven systems. Uh, certainly like the Puna Sanchu, the Meng De Chu, the Deng Ma Chu, Ama Chu, uh, Wang Chu, the Mao Chu, the Nira Ama Chu, they definitely have them because we know that they're there and maybe some of the other ones. All on the big southern rivers that are right along the border that drain out.
what I'm doing is I'm testing that uh, the receiver is one working correctly. We want to make sure that it's recording data. Um, each receiver gets a new SD card. This is where the data is actually recorded. So we have to test that that is um, working correctly and recording data. We have a test tag here. So this is actual the tag that goes into the fish. There's the uh, antenna. So this is our test tag. So when I turn the receiver on, hook it up to the computer, it should be reading this test tag at the, at the correct frequency and the tag number. Yes. Now he's going to walk down right b below you. Good. Yeah. The river's right there. So we got this with unobstructed uh, view of it so that it will really be loud when it comes up. We should act, I mean, it should really be loud right there. Nothing will be able to swim by without us hearing it. In fact, as soon as it comes around the bend down there about 400 meters or so it'll, and gets in line of sight, this will hear it. And it'll go probably another 500 meters up. So it's almost a kilometer that we'll be able to listen to it go up. The nice thing too is there's a deep pool right here. Probably the only big deep pool in this whole stretch. So as they fight through the rapids, they'll sit there right behind that rock and rest and then go on up. See, so that'll be, it's really, it's perfect. And now we are actually walking up to the Chamkarchu River site. We have two receiver stations there. And uh, yeah, we're going to build the second one because it got damaged. We're basically walking on a, a new constructed route for the Chamkachu uh, hydropower dam. And in summers actually, there's lots of landslides around this place. And we had gone through that during the summer monitoring trip last year around June. Tracking the Masir has been very, very challenging. I mean, like, wherever the fish move, me, we move. The only problem is we have to take the, you know, uh, you know, landscape, the aerial route, whereas they take the water bodies. And uh, yeah, I would say the landscape has been very, very challenging. Because of the landscape, because it's difficult to get to the river in many, many parts of Bhutan, right? The road's up here, the river's down here, you just can't get there. Um, you know, we're just, uh, we just do the best we can. We just uh, completed rebuilding the second uh, station on the Chamkachu stretch, which is so important to be you know, placed here because if fishes actually cross over the first, you know, the station which is just about uh, one half a kilometer up from the confluence, then once they cross over that, if they really swim like you know this much of distance, like 15 kilometers inside the Chamkachu, it means like they are actually using this river you know, to spawn or to do any of those. So it's so important to have the second station here. Mashir is, you know, like, oh, Mashir is a monster. 
you need to have a very good skills how to angle the fish to angle them and bring it them to you know right place where you can land the fish is much more important We tried fly fishing, we tried cast netting, we tried spin fishing and from at the end of the trip we found out that spin fishing was more effective to catch a bigger marshes. For us we do not go for small fish marshes because our aim is to catch a marsh here which is taggable which has to be uh, a good size where we can insert a thumb size tack inside their bellies so with all that you know reasons we actually opt for spin fishing to be our anglers we need to understand more about you know like the behavior of fish and if you're not trained in how to angle a fish no way that you're going to catch a fish It's gold. Ten my here. Just to sterilize uh, all the equipments before we use uh, use them on the fish. Line looks exact, and it went out went in at one. One fifty four. Mm, One fifty four. All right. Tag number nineteen. Okay. All right. The surgery starts at two eleven. First Whoa, what is this? This is really good. Ginger sister. She's another sister. Yeah. Eldest, that's it. Eldest sister. We have friends everywhere we go, you know, that uh, know who we are and wave and smile and bring us bung chung and other things, you know, and so it's, yeah, it's really, it's spectacular. I mean, it, you know. The science alone would be rewarding, but the personal contacts that we have with the Bhutanese people are what make this something s totally special. It makes this project uh, like nothing else we've ever done before. Sometimes you have to make a decision that a scientist wouldn't like because it's an economic benefit. Sometimes you have to make a decision that, that is for the fish rather than for economics because in the long term, maybe that's more important. You know, certainly humans have a place on this earth, but so do the fish. It is, uh, it is remarkably built fish. Sturdy, hardy, and yet very sensitive. Long, it's got a, a kind of a flat part to its head where you can just tell that it's powering up these rivers and these rapids. You have seen the river and the water bodies, you know, and the landscape, the gradient at which the river flows and the rapids, they are built for such heavy duty, you know, rugged environment. I would love to see how they power up these, uh, these rapids because from our tracking data we know they travel far and fast in, uh, in low water. So 
uh, just so, so strong. Our goal was originally to have 10 fixed receiver stations on these two rivers and then down on the Manas after the confluence. But then we expanded the study and so now uh, we have 17 receiver stations much further up because in our original setup our tagged fish swam past, way past our farthest receivers. So far, what we know about this fish is like they are moving to spawn. Each population of golden masir in different uh, water bodies, uh, they have their own uh, home stream. Uh, they grow up from fry to fingerling and they swim back into the main river and when they are of the reproductive age and size, they are coming back to the same home stream. And different population, distinct, distinct golden masir populations are behaving very differently from one another. Wow, Jimmy, sir, the fish that you lost today, wow, it, I think like it was a you know, like yeah. very big one. Should be good size. Yeah. I think so, yep. They're smart. Huh? They know how to play the current. They know how to play the rocks. They know how to play the sticks. Yes. They know how to escape your, you know, hook you on, you hook your lure on a rock. Uh, and they're really, really strong. Maybe some of the strongest freshwater fish pound yes. for pound in yes. the world. So, and they're and they're really smart <laughs> and spooky. We'll have to have time then. If it gets, you know, like more, yeah, murkier. Yeah, we'll have a tougher time. That's yeah. exactly right. Oh. Royal Manas National Park, the total area is uh, 1,057 square kilometer. And this park is one of the oldest park in Bhutan. And it was established in 1963. And uh, in 1993, it was upgraded to National Park. Manas plays a very important role in, the, uh, in all fish and especially the marshes, they live in a big river and Manas is one of the biggest river in Bhutan and it's also the longest river and it has got a lot of tributaries and that's why the uh, marshes are very important to the Manas river 
and Manas is also very important for the Mahashirs. Kiss you big beautiful Bhutanese! <laughs> It's a big, big fish, beautiful coloration. The surgery went great, you know, couldn't be better. Perfect ending to a great day. You know, it was it's truly spectacular. And this is really a nice big fish, special tag, you know, all set for. I get asked this question a lot, you know, why protect the golden mass here? What is, what is the importance of golden mass here? What economic value it has? At the end of the day, uh, we as conservists, we don't, need, we don't need a reason to protect a species. Any time when you remove a species from uh, the system, it's going to have an impact. And it's going to have an impact that cannot necessarily be predicted. You know, there's, they're there for a reason, and until they're totally taken away, you don't know. From an ecological standpoint, it's a keystone species, meaning it's the top predator and it shapes the rest of the population. The golden masir, it's a key to the country, really, to the culture. Uh, and losing it would be a tragedy. Just think about some of the species that now we don't see and which are extinct. What, what do you feel right now? Which was seen during our parents' time. Forget about grandparents. If we do lose this fish, it's, it's a huge loss to the country and not just to the country, to the world actually. The only soundly protected species of golden masir reside in these rivers in Bhutan. This is the last bastion, the last Shangri-La, as it were, for golden masir. This is what we don't want, you know, we don't want our children in the future to say, okay, what is golden masir, you know, chances are, you know, the golden masirs might just be available in books and internet, you know, I just, I want them to, 
be able to see the Golden Master in their time. Thank you.